Well, we're in Catanning, Pennsylvania today, and we're going to go into the Armstrong County Historical Society's Museum. They're only open on Thursdays and Sundays from 1 to 3 p.m. And we're here on a Thursday afternoon, so we got lucky. Let's go on inside. You're on, you're gonna make you semi-famous on our 680 subscriber YouTube channel. <laughs> so we start off in the parlor. Part of the original building from 1842. This is one of their prized, more prized displays, the uh, Wetzel oil painting of the village of Catan. And 19th century. The Armstrong County Historical Society's museum in Catanning is only partly devoted to the town's frontier heritage, but to me the Battle of Catanning in 1756 during the French and Indian War is the most significant event in the town's history. Actually, prehistory is more accurate, for it wasn't until nearly 30 years later, after the Revolutionary War, that the site saw permanent Anglo-American settlement. Wow, knickknacks. Talk about a knickknack cabinet. Collection of glass salts. That's quite a collection. Oh, do we have one like that? Yeah, cool. I always thought that was a toothpick holder. I guess it was repurposed. So I'm going to talk about that while we wander around through the other rooms and wind up at the big monument to the battle down by the Allegheny River. And then we'll show you the really great restaurant we found. After all, history buffs as well as armies travel on their stomachs before adjourning to a little noted wayside marker several miles east of here on our way back to camp. Now in the mid 1750s, Catanning was the major Lenny Lappy or Delaware Indian town in the Allegheny River Valley, and as such it became a main base for raiding parties on British American settlements along the frontier to the east of here, following British General Braddock's disastrous defeat by French soldiers and their Indian allies just east of Fort Duquesne, about 35 miles or so downstream from here at present-day Pittsburgh. The raid on Catanning in early September 1756 followed two particularly deadly attacks by Indians from Catanning one of them at Fort McCord, the massacre that we covered in a video a couple of years ago, and there'll be a link to that in the description. And the other one was north of there at Paxtang, near the mouth of the Juniata River on the Susquehanna, several miles upstream from today's capital of Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. Several companies of Pennsylvania militia, totaling 300 men commanded by Colonel John Armstrong, assembled at Fort Shirley, today the hamlet of Shirleysburg on U.S. Highway 522, in southern Huntington County and trekked 120 miles west to get at their hated enemy. Now, uh, these men were not the frontiersmen and Minutemen of legend. Unlike their compatriots in New England, who had been at war with their neighboring Indian nations or were less constantly for a century or more by that time, these Pennsylvanians were by and large recent Scots-Irish or German immigrants or the first generation of their descendants. And until a little more than a year ago, theirs had been a peaceful coexistence with the Indians. Many, if not most, households along the Pennsylvania frontier were even unarmed. In fact, until the previous year, the provincial legislature, dominated by pacifistic Quakers, had refused even to fund the arming and manning of a militia until agitation by none other than Ben Franklin, and it should be mentioned armed mobs from the frontier, <laughs> yeah, some of them did hone firearms, threatening to invade the city of brotherly love, led them to change their minds. This is the room that I really want to look at, the early history of Catanning, including maybe some artifacts and some displays relating to its first existence as a, an Indian town, Delaware town. A lot of different stone implements here. 
presumably from this area. Here's a map that shows geography. There's Fort Pitt down in the bottom, Fort Duquesne down there in the lower left hand corner. Going up the Allegheny, there's Kitan, Kitane. This is where the raid took place. The raid was staged in 1756 that went to Fort McCord. And this was where the revenge was taken for that and other atrocities on the frontier in the Cumberland Valley later that year. Really neat. There's an artist's conception of the what the town looked like on the flat. Oh, there's the there's the militia down the lower left hand corner of this fairly primitive painting of the raid. So Armstrong's men, motivated as they might have been, are not the well-trained and equipped warrior farmers that the British regulars would encounter nine years later at Concord Bridge, and the high casualty rate among the militia here was largely because of that. In the attack on Katanning, Armstrong's force did in fact achieve complete surprise, which is probably why any of them made it back to their settlements alive, to be quite frank. The militia suffered disproportionate casualties. Armstrong himself was mortally wounded, and the surgeon accompanying the expedition, Hugh Mercer by name, who would go on to Revolutionary War fame as one of George Washington's most trusted friends and generals until killed in action at the Battle of Princeton in early 1777, was seriously wounded. Nevertheless, the raid was a strategic success for the British, although it took a long time for the success to become apparent. The Lenny Loppy in the town were mostly non-combatant women and children who fled with few belongings while the few warriors among them fought a delaying action. The militia set fire to the abandoned wood and bark houses. One of the main war chiefs died in his burning longhouse, and another longhouse filled with French gunpowder exploded with a bang that could be heard in Fort Duquesne. The Indians never reoccupied the town, and the fact that provincial militia had been able to penetrate this deeply into the Allegheny wilderness to reach them in their homes had the same effect on the Lenny Lape as a bombing attack on New York City by the Germans would have had on the Americans during World War II. The experience demoralized enough rank-and-file Indians that when wampum belts of peace came out from Philadelphia in the aftermath, many of the surviving chiefs had an open mind. Now we'll take a break to show you the very nice restaurant we stumbled on just across the street from the monument. Nice Riesling to drink. Beautiful. Beautiful piece. So I got the beef trifecta. And uh, Debbie got the Monterey, Monterey chicken. chicken with uh, all kinds of stuff. Green beans and mashed potatoes. And a nice bottle of Riesling, domestic Riesling, salmon run Riesling. Very nice. It's so nice that even Debbie likes it, which means it's not too dry. Okay. Now back to history. We're approaching a place on US 422 called Blanket Hill. On September 7th, as Colonel Armstrong's column approached Katanning, his scouts came across a small band of Indians around a campfire near this spot. 
Undiscovered by the Indians, they sent a warning back to Armstrong, who decided to leave a small force here under the command of Lieutenant James Hogg to keep watch, and then led the main force on a bypass for the attack on Catanning. Before moving on, Armstrong ordered the men to leave their packs and blankets here with the stay-behinds, thus the hill's name to this day. The next day, Lieutenant Hogg decided to attack the party of Indians, and as the bronze plaque put here in the 1930s by the Daughters of the American Revolution says, it did not end well for the provincials. So that's our little look at the French and Indian War in Armstrong County. Hope you liked it, and we'll take some time to look at our other videos. See you soon.